This is the final season of Stranger Things. Season 5, according to 60,000 people, theoretically should come out in just two years. Fingers crossed by 2024, we're all sitting down on our couches, binge watching the final season of Stranger Things together and bawling our eyes out. Yes, crying because it's the end of an era, the end of the show, but also this will have the biggest character deaths of all five seasons. I don't know about you, but I think there's a really good chance that they're going to go full endgame and kill Eleven off, sacrificing herself to close the portal, defeat Vecna and save the world. But also, what about Steve? I would be so surprised if they let him live through season 5. It's one of the biggest worries of the fans. I mean, honestly, the Duffer Brothers have hinted at some other characters getting more of the spotlight this season, which just means that there's a good chance they might get killed off too. But that's what we're going to do today. I want to sit down and go over every character that has an 85% chance or higher of getting killed off in season 5. Just be careful, no one knows yet, but there may be spoilers. With the last death video, we called Eddie and Max's death 100% right. Hit the nail on the head, even how they would die. But if you're new here, welcome to the channel. I'm Michael J. If you want to join a community that loves talking about Stranger Things, feel free to go down and punch that subscribe button. Only 12% of the people watching this video actually remember to subscribe, so this is just a friendly reminder if you want to help support the channel and be a part of the community before we hit 500k, all you gotta do is hit that subscribe button. I'll have some more Stranger Things videos out soon, but feel free to suggest any video ideas you want to see in the comments. I've also been working with some artists to create some really dope Stranger Things wallpapers over on my Twitter. First, we did one of Chrissy at one of Eddie's concerts if they both survive season four, and then we had a cute Jopper one. And now we have two more. The first one is of that really wholesome moment between Lucas and Max in the Creel house with the notepads. I just remember smiling so much when I watched that scene that I had to get this made, and I love it. And the next is my favorite 11 kill. We just went through and did a complete kill count video of all of Eleven's kills, and I think this helicopter one is my favorite. I think these both came out so sick. Go follow me on Twitter at It's Michael J, and you can have awesome wallpapers like me. All right, now let's jump right into this video because honestly, I think going into season five, the first and biggest worry for everyone right now is Max. Yeah, season four finale, Vecna actually establishes a connection to her, successfully opening the portal in the middle of Hawkins. Murray saves the day by flamethrowing the Russian demogorgons, making Vecna drop Max before he could take her eyes, but was it soon enough to save her? She was conscious only for a minute before saying she couldn't see or feel anything, and then she died or fell into a coma. I, I can't feel or see anything. I know, I know. It's okay. We're gonna get you some help, okay? And just, just hold on. Look, I'm so scared. I'm so scared. I'm so scared. Later, we see her in the hospital, still technically alive, but when Eleven goes into her mind to see just how she really was, Max was nowhere to be found. I think originally they wanted to kill off Max, but they just weren't sure about how the fans would react to her being killed off, especially after such an emotional season. So I think they half killed her off and kind of put her on pause so they could do whatever they wanted with her in season five. And out of everyone in Hawkins, I think she's physically doing the worst right Right now. Yeah, Hopper's starving and his ankles should still be broken, but Max is blind, broken, and barely alive. If anyone is on the brink of death right now, it's her, and they didn't keep her alive for nothing. Season 5, I think that we're going to see Max still trapped in Vecna's mind, where he keeps all of his victims he takes, but she's completely disconnected from her physical body. I think we're going to see Max running and hiding from Vecna in his own mind, even possibly traveling through Vecna's memories. I'm kind of looking forward to them exploring his home life more, why he hated his mom so much and the story around him first getting his powers, as well as his time with Papa at Hawkins Lab. And finally, why he wants to kill everyone and reset the world. Like why? Can we do some Vecna therapy and figure out what the root of this problem is? I feel like Max has a good chance of making it back to her body halfway through the season where she'll be blind and then get some kind of residual powers from being linked to Vecna, just like Will got with his true sight abilities. After Vecna used Will as a host, Will was able to feel his presence and his thoughts and how he feels. I feel like Max is going to get some kind of power powers, allowing her to feel others' emotions or thoughts or take glimpses into their minds or memories. Something that was such a big part of season four, but I don't think she's totally safe. I think that she has such a big chance of getting killed off because of how much emotional weight they built up for her last season. She finally opened up about her trauma, losing Billy, writing those death letters to all of her friends, including Steve, which was so wholesome. There's just no ways they can breeze over all of that. She's the underdog. She got the short end of the stick in life and has closed herself off from emotions to protect herself from getting hurt and she finally opened up. The song that kept her alive all season long literally said, if I only could make a deal with God, I'd get him to swap our places. 
If Vecna is considered the god of the Upside Down and she has to make a deal with him to save one of her friends, especially Eleven in season five, I'm going to not be okay. If Eleven is their only hope of defeating Vecna and saving the world and during their first fight, Vecna is about to kill her, I could totally see Max giving her life, sacrificing herself to swap places with Eleven so that everyone could have a second chance to defeat Vecna in the finale. That would be so emotional. We would all lose it and then everyone would read her letter she wrote to them and then they would all use this as the boost they needed to get their craft together and regroup and defeat Vecna in the finale. I think it would be pretty poetic for her to actually have to make a deal with the Dark God and swap places with her friend that she loved to save everybody. I think Max has an 82% chance of death in season five. Now, real quick, I wanna to talk to you about the sponsor of today's video, HelloFresh. HelloFresh is the best meal kit service that delivers healthy new meals to your door each week. Personally, I've been eating out way too much recently just because I've been so busy and haven't had time to find a recipe I like, then go to the grocery store and get all the ingredients ingredients, but with HelloFresh, you can scroll through all their delicious recipes and simply pick the ones you like, and in a couple days, all the ingredients you need will be delivered to your doorstep. HelloFresh's newest menu release includes Mediterranean recipes filled with fresh fruits and veggies, nuts, olive oils, and fiber-packed whole grains for a nourishing and deliciously balanced meal, which I am totally here for. I love how easy it is to customize their service to exactly what you need, whether it's delivery dates, or ingredients, or adding an extra meal, or even changing your delivery address. You can get it delivered to wherever you're vacationing for the week. I love how easy they make it for me to eat good and stay healthy. Go down and use my link to go to hellofresh.com and use this code pogmjsep16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes plus three surprise gifts. Once you click it, my description will live update to count up the purchases. Thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring the video and thanks to you guys for checking them out. All right, now back to the video. Next, I think the person they could be possibly setting up to get killed off in season five is Mike. Mainly because this is the last season. Elle is the most important she's ever been. Yeah, she saved their lives in season one with the Demogorgon and saved their lives again in season two with the Mind Flare and kind of again in season three when she stopped the Russians from executing her friends, but season four, she kind of lost. Murray flamethrowing the Demogorgons was the biggest thing to save Max along with, you know, a little help from Elle, but season five is the ultimate finale. She is the biggest weapon they have to defeat the Upside Down and Vecna once and for all. She is their biggest asset and is just just the same Vecna's biggest target, and what better of a way to get to her than through the people she loves? More specifically, Mike. Yeah, Hopper too, that would be such an emotional death if he sacrificed himself to save Elle, but they literally just faked his death in season 3 and spent all of season 4 getting him back together with Elle. It would be so ridiculous if after all that they just killed him off again. I think Mike would be the best choice here. They're already trying to set it up saying that he's the heart of the group and the leader and everything. If Vecna wants to get to Elle, the easiest way is by distracting her with something and then killing Mike. I think they could really play into the I love you bit, him finally embracing it and saying it before sacrificing himself. They kind of broke that ice last season with the pizza dough freezer speech. I love you for exactly who you are. You're my superhero. But I still think it would be super emotional and Vecna isn't someone that's afraid to play dirty. That's insane, that's blasphemous. I wouldn't be surprised if he tries to hurt Elle by taking away all the people that she loves most in life. I'm not saying they should do this, but if Mike gets a tendril through the heart, Billy style, that would be pretty sad. Him going out as the heart of the party, I mean, the biggest reason he was so safe last season is because he was so sidelined out in California and didn't really have any character development or emotional weight added on minus their little fight about saying I love you. But in season five, he's going to be in the spotlight in Hawkins all season. Watch out early on to see how much time they spend on him and Elle, and we'll see if they're going to kill him off. I feel like since they sidelined him, Will, and Jonathan so hard last season with the California storyline, they're going to try to make up for it by giving all of them the spotlight in season five. Will with all of his big things we'll talk about soon, Jonathan with the Nancy Steve love triangle, as well as helping Will with his hidden feelings, and Mike with leading the group again, probably kicking Dustin out of the leader position, unless they're just going to break everybody up again and let them both lead their own mini groups. Personally, I think Mike has an 87% chance of dying in season five. Now, shockingly enough, I think Eleven is the next person that they could very easily get a little trigger happy with and kill off. I mean, this whole show has been about her. She is literally the main character and with the show coming to an end, her plot armor, just like everyone else's, will be running out very soon. I think Eleven would have possibly one of the hardest deaths to make it through. Seeing where she came from in season one with nothing to her name, alone in the woods, with no one that really loved her in her life to where she is now with such a strong support system with so many people around her that would
would literally die to protect her, if she was the one that had to sacrifice herself to close the portal to the Upside Down once and for all, I think we would all lose it. She was the one to open up the gateway to the Upside Down in the first place by banishing Henry Creel there after the Hawkins Lab massacre. She's the reason that everything has happened. It would only be fitting if she's the only one that can put a stop to everything once and for all. The only thing I can't figure out is why she would need to die or sacrifice herself to kill Vecna. I mean, we kind of thought that she did that at the end of season one when she walked up to the Demogorgon and said goodbye to Mike before she evaporated it and disappeared with it, which by the way, now that we've seen her do that attack and what it actually does, it doesn't make too much sense. In 1979, Hawkins Lab Massacre, she does this to Henry and it disintegrates him and banishes him to the Upside Down. But when we see her do the same move four years later in 1983 to a Demogorgon, she says goodbye as if she knows that she's going to disappear too. Goodbye, Mike. But the first time she did this, nothing happened to her. Why would she think she would disappear this time? Also, she didn't kill Henry when she did it, she just banished him to the Upside Down, and like we've seen in the past, every time Elle overexerts herself with her powers, she collapses, she just passes out. So theoretically, if she transported her and the Demogorgon both to the Upside Down, she would have 100% passed out, and when we see her wake up, the Demogorgon is nowhere to be found. I would think it would do the same thing it did to Henry and keep him alive, just put him in the Upside Down, but Elle's still alive, and she passed out in the same place she was in when we first saw her in the real world, so no sign of a struggle between the two. I guess maybe the Demogorgon just couldn't withstand the change and wasn't as strong as Henry, so he literally died when he disintegrated? What do you think? Maybe she'll have to do this same move to Vecna one last time, truly disintegrating him and killing him off. Oh my gosh, if Mike is still alive, she needs to turn back and say goodbye Mike, just like she did when she saved his life the first time. They could even do a flashback that gives Mike PTSD or something. To the first time they did it, and I swear everyone would start bawling. I still feel like they should do a theatrical release and let us go watch season five in the theater with all the other fans. I feel like that'd be so awesome. But this time after Elle says goodbye, Mike would scream out, I love you. And then she would disintegrate Vecna and disappear herself as well. That would be so many full circle things in one. The first interdimensional kill we saw would be the same as the last. She would kill Vecna the same way she thought she killed him the first time. They did that in Star Wars three times to Palpatine. Not only did Mace Windu deflect lightning back at him in three, but Luke did the same thing in 6, and Rey did the same thing in 9 to finally kill him off for good. Plus, the goodbye Mike homage would just make everyone sob, and they could sprinkle a little extra on top with Mike finally saying I love you to Elle. I think this would be so freaking emotional. You're destroying everything, and for what? Elle easily has a 90% chance of being killed off in season 5. What do you think? Alright, so next on the list to step away from death is Will. I think everybody knows that for 3 seasons now, this character has been hugely sidelined. Season 1 and 2, he played such a big role. He was the focal point of the plot. He's what everyone was fighting to save and rescue, and as soon as they got him back, everyone just disregarded him. Even after all that traumatic stuff happening in season one, next season he was still worried about telling people about his visions because he didn't want to bother anyone and them to think he's crazy. He's lived his whole life being the weirdo. He's trying to be as normal as possible now. It's hard enough as is being the boy who died and lived, let alone if he's still dealing with it. The Duffer Brothers have already announced that they're finally planning on bringing Will back into the spotlight in season five and just the same, I really hope they get him a better haircut too. I mean, if they do, it could wow us all hard enough that he feels like a brand new character, especially if they let him take the front lines with Elle, helping her fight Vecna for the end battle. But we already know what they like to do to new characters, especially ones they give a lot of screen time this season. If they're literally telling us going into the season how important he's going to be, I feel like there's a good chance they're going to try to kill him off. Will needs to play such a big role this season to make up for the last three seasons they did him dirty. And I can't help but feel like his connection to Vecna and the Upside Down and his neck tingle is going to play such a big role in Will's importance this season. I feel like they should have him working closely with Elle on the front lines to find where Vecna is and stay on top of how Vecna's feeling and what he's thinking. I personally would love to see Will's powers develop into something a little more, something stronger, but I'm worried that we're going to spend all season trying to play keep away with him from Vecna. If his connection to Vecna is still really strong, like we were thinking now that he's back in Hawkins, he's going to be a bigger target than ever. And last time we saw Vecna, he was in need of a new host, a new body to access the real world with. I know we saw him do it already with Will in Season 2 and then he moved on to Billy in Season 3 and he just stayed in the Upside Down and made his kills from there to open up the portals, but how is he going to get into the real world this season? Is he just going to walk through the portal with an army or is he going to try to take over Will again? I know everyone is already super emotional with Will throughout the show because his life might be the saddest out of everyone's. I mean, he literally got kidnapped to a different dimension, was said to be dead, then came back only to be bullied for coming back and then got possessed by the Lord of the Dead and then left 
in the dust by all his friends when he got back because they all got girlfriends. I mean, just like Henry Creel, he was an outcast too. He was different and had a hard time making friends. And I think they showed us all those similarities between Henry and Will last season for a reason. I think that Henry chose Will because he knows how similar they are. The host process would be easiest with him. He sees himself in Will. I think Will's hidden feelings are also going to play a large role in adding emotional weight to his character this season, prepping for him to get killed off. If he truly does love someone and he fights hard enough against Vecna to free himself and kill him, sacrificing himself for the person he loves, that would be so emotional. I'm worried that they're going to try to kill off Jonathan in all of this, get Will to turn to the dark side because of it, or turn against his friends if he thinks it's Mike's fault or something. I think Jonathan could easily get killed off just because he's the only one who knows Will's secret and having him die along with his secret would mean so much. This would rip Will apart. I think Will is definitely in the danger zone this season. I don't think Will's safe and I think the Duffer brothers misinterpreted us saying to give him the spotlight. What? Give Will the spotlight and kill him off? Okay. I know I would be sobbing right alongside Joyce. She would just be an emotional wreck for sure. It would be pretty brutal if it came down to some crazy scenario where Mike had to choose between L and Will on who to save and the other Vecna kills? Because you know Will would 100% give the same head nod Hopper gave Joyce in season 3 and tell Mike to save L. See, that's the thing. Everybody's been so mean to Will his whole life, yet he would still give his life to save any one of his friends instantly without even thinking about it. Another nightmare scenario I have is if Eleven has to fight Vecna in the end through a possessed Will. I would not be okay after that. Alright, sadly enough, Will has a 95% chance of death this season. Now, after that, you feel like it be hard to top that, right? But then you see who's up next and you're like, nope, no chance. Next up is the babysitter himself, Steve. I think it's the biggest meme at this point that they're going to kill off Steve eventually. Every season, everyone seems to be sitting on the edge of their seats during every close encounter with death he has, biting their nails to see if he'll make it out alive. And as many of you know, this is it. We are in the end game. If they're going to kill him off, season five will be the time. And just like everyone else we've mentioned in this video, with him too, they've started setting up his emotional baggage in season four. With Will, it was his hidden feelings. With Mike, the I love you speech. Elle has been set up this whole show for an emotional death. Max, with the letters she wrote to everyone. And with Steve, it might be the most wholesome yet. If you remember, when he was driving the RV full of kids and talking with Nancy in the front seat, he expressed himself to her a bit by saying that he never really got over her. Sometimes he finds himself daydreaming of a future with her. One where they have a bunch of little Nugget Harringtons and they're all driving across the country on a family road trip. Personally, I think Steve has matured so much each season. This Steve is not the Steve that Nancy dated in season one. This is the babysitter Steve who has been through so much, who has matured into a leader and a fighter. He has shown over time that he is ready to sacrifice himself to protect these kids. And just like everyone else, I'm worried that his plot armor is running out. Season five might be the season where he has to make the ultimate sacrifice, dying to once again protect the kids he loves. I mean, that's his job. That's been his entire purpose on this show. It's crazy to think about how when the Duffers originally wrote his character, he was supposed to get killed off at the end of season one after they all fight that Demogorgon together. It's a blessing that he made it to season four, let alone season five. This reminds me of Han Solo from Star Wars. Harrison Ford originally wanted George Lucas to kill off his character at the end of the first movie. Movie. So he could die a hero's death, and thankfully he didn't do that and he became a fan favorite. Cut to 40 years later and his character came full circle and they killed him off in the final movies. The same thing is going to happen to Steve I'm afraid. I know I would like it just as much as you if he got the happy ending where he stayed alive and they defeated Vecna and he got to ride off in the sunset with Nancy. But I feel like that's just the dream they want us all to believe right before they slow motion kill him off in front of us tears instantly. I'm telling you, season five needs a theatrical release. Please, I'm going to go buy my tickets right now. But also, you have to think about the other big plot point they set up in season four. Not only did they give him the dream he might not ever get, but they also set up a love triangle with him, Nancy, and Jonathan. The only thing is, Steve was never meant to truly be with Nancy. For the first three seasons, they have been setting up Nancy and Jonathan into this storyline, into this relationship all the fans were rooting for. That was always their goal, and that's always what the storyline has been. Steve was supposed to get killed off, not be with Nancy. It wasn't until season four that they steered Jonathan so off course from his normal character that I just had no idea what they were doing with him. Yeah, things could change, but I think this may just be something that they snap out of. Plus, Steve dying would solve this love triangle, so Nancy didn't have to choose and her and Jonathan would just stay together. If they don't kill off Steve in season five, it would genuinely be the biggest plot twist of the entire show. I feel like we'd be living in a multiverse of what if timeline and it wasn't the real Stranger Things timeline. 
timeline. I think I'm going to have to say that Steve has a 98% chance of dying in season 5, which means that as of now, my top two that I think they're going to kill off in season 5 is Will and Steve. Let me know what you think. Who are your top two characters they're going to kill off next season? Put them in the comments. I'll see you soon in another video, but until then, I will see you on the Discord. Peace.